This question is very interesting and very lovely. Welcome back to my channel. Let's all solve this. Okay, the question says the square roots of x root of root 90 minus square root of x root of 60 equals square root of x root of root 40. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, we are going to first of all try to make this look reasonable, okay? Because it's actually looking awkward. Yeah. How do we do that? Remember that n root of a is equal to a raised to the power of 1 over n, right? Yeah, n root of a is equal to a raised to the power of 1 over n. So applying this, we have this will be 90 raised to the power of 1 over root x. Now it's looking better, right? Minus 60 raised to the power of 1 over root x is equal to 40 raised to the power of 1 over root x. Okay, now we have 1 over root x, 1 over root x, 1 over root x. Let's make it look better. Let's just assign a number, a, an alphabet to it. So we can say let 1 over root x be equal to y, right? So if we say that, that means we are going to write this as 90 to the power of y minus 60 to the power of y is equal to 40 to the power of y. Okay? Dividing both sides by 40 to the power of y. We will have 90 to the power of y over 40 to the power of y. Minus 60 to the power of y over 40 to the power of y is equal to 40 to the power of y over 40 to the power of y. Now, let's continue. So we can see that, remember, that a over x divided by b, sorry, a to the power of x, divided by b to the power of x is equal to a divided by b raised to the power of x. All right? So it means that we can write this as 90 divided by 40 raised to the power of y minus 60 divided by 40 raised to the power of y is equal to 1. Because when this divides, is divided by itself, we have 1. So let's um, reduce this to its lowest term. This, we remove this, right? Now, 9 is the same thing as... So here we have 9 over 4 to the power of y minus 6 over 4 to the power of y. Now, let's bring this in. If we do that, we have minus 1 is equal to 0. Okay. 9 is the same thing as 3 squared, and 4 is the same thing as 2 squared. So we have 3 squared divided by 2 squared raised to the power of y minus, now 6 is the same thing as 2 multiplied by 3, and 4 is the same thing as 2 multiplied by 2. Raised to the power of y minus 1 is equal to 0. So we continue. If this is the first time you are seeing us, it's time to hit the subscription button, turn on your notification bell so that you don't miss our amazing videos. Okay? We upload our videos as often as possible. So turn in at your confidence, there must be something new for you to watch by God's grace. Then give us a thumbs up if you love what we are doing. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much. I really appreciate. Okay. Alright. Now we can write this as, remember that a to the power of x, okay, I've written it somewhere, using this particular rule here. We can write this as 3 over 2 raised to the power of 
1 raised to the power of 2, right? 3 over 2 to the power of 2 raised to the power of y. Okay, minus. Now here, 2 you remove 2, you have 3 over 2 to the power of y. Okay, minus 1 is equal to 0. Now remember that a to the power of m raised to the power of n is also equal to a to the power of n raised to the power of m. Okay, so it simply means that we can write this as 3 over 2 raised to the power of y all squared minus 3 over 2 raised to the power of y minus 1 is equal to 0. Now we have 3 over 2 to the power of y, 3 over 2 to the power of y. We can call it something, okay? So we can say let 3 over 2 to the power of y be equal to p. You can call it p, okay? So it simply means, now I'm going to copy this somewhere, or I'll just leave this space entirely and concentrate on these two. So if we say let this be equal to p, it simply means that what we have here is p squared minus p minus 1 is equal to 0. So solving this using the quadratic equation formula that states that x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac everything divided by 2a. So in this case now, our a is 1, the coefficient of b squared, our b is minus 1, the coefficient of p, our c is minus 1, the constant. So we can say that our p then will be equal to minus minus 1 plus or minus the square root of minus 1 squared minus 4 multiplied by a is 1 and c is minus 1. Everything divided by 2 multiplied by 1. So our p is minus minus is plus, so we have plus 1, plus or minus the square root of minus 1 squared is 1, minus 4 times minus 1 is minus 4. Everything divided by 2. So our p is 1 plus or minus square root of 1 plus 4, minus minus is plus divided by 2. So our p is 1 plus or minus square root of 5 divided by 2. Okay, now remember that our p, our p is 3 over 2 to the power of y. Now we have two values of p. All right, we have two values of p from here. So we know that the first p should be 1 plus root 5 divided by 2. And the second p will be 1 minus root 5 divided by 2. Now you are going to notice that p2 will give us a negative number. And you know that that is going to be rejected. Why? Because look at the value of our p. Our p has y as its what? Its exponent. And for us to find the value of y, we are particularly going to introduce log. And when you introduce log, there will be nothing like log of a negative number. So if p is negative, we are not going to get a defined solution here. We're going to have an undefined solution. It's not even possible. So that's why we are rejecting p2. So we are going to concentrate on p equals 1 plus root 5 divided by 2. I hope that is clear. All right. Now, let us continue. Now, remember that our p is 3 over 2 to the power of y. So we can say 3 over 2 
raised to the power of y is equal to 1 plus root 5 divided by 2. Now, like I said, we can only find y using log. Okay? And remember that y is 1 over root x. So, we are going to get our x from the value of y. So, introducing log to both sides. So, log on both sides. We have log 3 divided by 2 to the power of y is equal to log 1 plus root 5 divided by 2. Now, remember that log a to the power of b is equal to b multiplied by log a. So it means that we can write this as, we can write this as y log 3 divided by 2 is equal to log 1 plus root 5 divided by 2. All right. Now, to get the value of y, we need to divide both sides by log 3 over 2. Okay? So, dividing both sides by log 3 over 2, we will have y is equal to log 1 plus root 5 divided by 2 divided by log 3 over 2. Now, remember that we are not looking for the value of y. We are actually looking for the value of x. So, I think this is the right time to introduce our x. Okay? So, let's introduce our x. Now, recall that y is 1 over root x. So we have 1 over root x is equal to log 1 plus root 5 over 2 divided by log 3 over 2. All right? Now we need to take the inverse of this. So if 1 over root x is equal to this, it implies that root x will be equal to this over this, right? So it's going to be log 3 over 2 divided by log 1 plus root 5 divided by 2. Now remember that log a over b is equal to log a minus log b okay so that simply means that we can write this as square root of x is equal to log 3 minus log 2 divided by log 1 plus root 5 minus log 2 okay so, square root of x is equal to, now, we are going to make use of our calculator. Yes, let's make use of our calculator. To do that, we have, because we are close to the solution right now, and I'm super excited that we are able to solve this weird-looking math question, okay? Please permit me to use this to clean this so that this board will be better. All right, now... We have root x is equal to, let's list the logs that we have there, and then try to substitute the values, okay? So, log, um, log 3 is 0 0.4771, so we have log 3, 0 0.4771, log 2, I don't want to use my brain so that I don't make mistake because I don't want to shoot this video the second time. Log 2 is 0 0.3010. Yeah, that one, you know. And log 1 plus root 5. First of all, root 5 is 2.2361. So 1 plus root 5 should be 3.2361. So we have log 3. 
2361. That is it for log 1 plus root 5. Okay? And this will give us, if we solve that log 3.2361, that is 0 0.5100, approximately. All these numbers are approximated, okay? Then we already have log 2 as 0 0.301. So, root x then should be equal to log 3 is 0 0.4771. Log 2 is 0 0.3010 divided by log 1 plus root 5 is 0 0.5100 and log 2 is 0 0.301. So root x then will be equal to, so let's go ahead and find this, okay? So we have 0 0.4771 minus 0 0.3010 so we have 0 0.1761 divided by 0 0.5100 minus 0 0.3010 we give us 0 0.209 okay so if we solve this we have 0 0.1761 my, divided by 0 0.209, we have 0 0.8426. If I don't make, if I don't make any mistake, that's all we should have. So therefore, our x will be the square of 0 0.8426. Okay, the square of 0 0.8426. So that will be 0 0.8426 raised to the power of 2, and that will give us 0 0.71 approximately. And this is the value of our x. Thank you so much if you watch to the end, and God bless you for me.